Fernando in Uruguay, Uruguay, writes to me and he says, Hi Paul, I watched a video review on YouTube about the Sony TAF6B integrated amplifier that has a pulse locked power supply instead of a transformer. I would like you to explain to us in a non-technical language, <laughs> good luck, what differences there are between pulse lock power supplies versus EI and toroidal transformers and why the latter are usually preferred in high-end gear. What advantages and disadvantages do each of them have? Well, first off, I, I will do my best. This pulse locked thing, I'm quite sure you mean a, um, a switch mode power supply. Now, maybe the translation is different, but I'm sure you're referring to the same thing. The, the greatest number of power supplies today are switch mode power supplies. I mean, they are everywhere. You ever buy an LED light bulb? Well, inside that LED light bulb is a switch mode power supply. Oh gosh, any computer today, any, just about anything has a switch power supply. We in the high-end industry are slow to change, and so we stick with the big old-fashioned power supplies. You know, the big old transformers. Here's one. Uh, ouch. That was sharp. Oh. They have these, this is a toroid. So this, this is basically what we use for most of our products. Now, in 2023, 2024, I don't know, 2025, sometime in the next few years, we'll slowly but surely be making a switch over to switch mode power supplies. And that's gonna take some time and that won't apply to everything. But what is the difference between the two? So a toroidal or EI transformer is basically just a whole bunch of steel with copper wound around it, and it's a transformer. It takes the 60 or 50 hertz wherever you live. It <coughs> transfers that energy into the secondary of this and then into a power supply. Transformers are used for a couple of things. One, safety, isolation. Because they are magnetically coupled, there's no real, there's no direct wire between the two. You don't want to have your system plugged directly into the 120 or the 230 volts. Um, you want to have some measure of isolation and you do that with a magnetic field on a transformer. The other thing it does is it converts the voltage. So if I have a sprout or if I have something that I want to run at say 30 volts, I have to take the 120 volts that comes out of the wall and convert it to 30 volts, which is what I need. And that's a really simple thing in a transformer. You, transformers, again, have this steel and then they have windings an input winding and an output winding, and they're just coils of wire, and they couple magnetically. The, the energy trans transfers magnetically without any real connection, okay? And so the turns ratio determines how much voltage comes out, and it's really simple. If I have 120 volts coming in and I want 120 volts coming out, then coil, the input coil, has to have the same number of turns as the output coil. That's called one to one. Input has 100 turns. Output has 100 turns. Now, if I want less voltage coming out, I need fewer turns. Real simple. So 100 turns going in, 50 turns coming out, I'll get 60 volts at the output. Super, super simple. The opposite is true. Fewer turns on the input, more turns on the output, I get a higher voltage. That's how that works. Okay. Now, switch mode power supplies are far more complicated. They are efficient and they use very small components. So this big beast, you'd never find that in a switch mode power supply. If you look at a switch mode power supply, they have little tiny transformers. They're still coupled or decoupled from the wall with a transformer, but that transformer for cost reasons is very, very small. 
how do they do that? Well, what they do is they have to take the 60 hertz or the 50 hertz out of the wall and switch it very fast. Chop, 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 chop it up into little bitty pieces through a, a, a chopping circuit so that it's at a very high frequency because the higher the frequency, the smaller the transformer. The lower the frequency, the bigger the transformer. This is a 50 hertz transformer. If I were to run um, 500 hertz through this, it would be 10 times smaller. If I run 100,000 cycles through it, it'd be teeny weeny. And I could still get the same power and the same voltage across it. So a switch mode power supply chops up that 50 or 60 hertz into little tiny bits, very high frequency. We run it through small little transformers and then the rest of it's a conventional power supply, just like what comes with the output. And that's the essence of the difference between the two. Now, that said, a properly designed switch mode power supply can have regulation, can have cleaner power than this big beast if they're designed properly, and that is an art. The real downside to a switch mode power supply are twofold, cost and noise. That high frequency switching, that makes a lot of noise and it's a true art to try and get that thing down to where it makes very little radiated noise. And one of the reasons we're switching is we can now buy off the shelf switch mode power supplies that are clean as a whistle, have tons of power at a pretty reasonable price. About the same price that we can now buy these. So that was the break point for PS Audio. Once those two things came in a line, we'll be switching. So, all right. Sorry for the long-winded explanation. It's when I can't use real technical terms, it becomes a little more difficult, but you'll get it. Okay. Thanks for the question. Talk to you later.